Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's mid-May. Let's go on a garden tour, see what's growing and what's not. Okay, so here in zone 9A, I am on the Texas coast, and um, yeah, it's starting to get warm. The days are consistently in the upper 80s, and the nights are in the 70s, and that's really ideal weather for gardening. But it's also, um, occasionally it goes up to the mid 90s and that plays havoc on some of my plants. Um, I've got a lot of plants interplanted this year in my garden, intercropped, and um, that's really helped me not have many pest problems this year. I haven't seen many pests at all. Uh, it's brought in the bees with all the pollinator attractors I've got in the garden and that's been a good thing. But um, I do have some problems though. I've got some diseases and I've got some blight on my tomatoes, on some of my tomatoes, and I've got some odd things going on that I'm not quite sure about. Uh, where one tomato is really healthy and right next to it I've got another tomato that's actually dying and I think that um, there's got to be some, some something viral or bacterial uh, maybe fungal but you know the soil is the same soil so that's why I think it must be something viral or bacterial hey that happens you know it's gardening and I've to told you I'm going to show you my successes and I'm going to show you my failures if something doesn't go right we're going to talk about it because we can all learn from that together so let's go take a look around all right, we'll begin our tour right here on the patio. I've got a lot of potted things here. I've got my jalapeno pepper from last year. Doing really well, actually, putting on some peppers. My basil over there is really at, the, at that perfect size where the leaves have all the aroma that's not yet skunky, hasn't tried to bolt yet. And uh, yeah, that's how I like basil at that size. Uh, yeah, some peppers over here doing well. These beautiful flowers, I love these things. So prolific. And I've seen a lot more bees in my garden this year now that I have pollinator attractors, flowers. I've got some thyme and rosemary down here, some more peppers. Yeah, the, these plants up here, mostly herbs. Those flowers gave up, I don't know why. I think uh, that black pot absorbed too much heat. But uh, yeah, we're doing really well up here. This, this is about this is beautiful. I love it. I've got my new little bed here. And the beans are growing up the trellis. I've got some uh, pole beans in the back there. I just wanted to put some extras in. I think this is a, a virus here. Every now and then I'll see something like that on the beans. But it only affects a couple of leaves. Um, down here I've got my squash. These are Table King squash. They're bush varieties. I was going to thin them, but they're not looking like they need to be thinned just yet. Um, I'll thin them if they start overlapping too much. I'll take these middle guys out. But they're putting on flowers. Got a couple peppers over here. Uh, this guy is the one I pruned to show you how pepper plants put on new growth. And it's really slow, but once it bushes out a bit, I'm going to use that as the, uh, the demo, you know, the, the plant to show you that they do in fact uh, bush out when you prune them and this is my radish going to seed a, a rodent ate the exposed portion of the actual tuber down there but it's still growing and I'm gonna harvest some seeds from that looking kind of sad here's the seed pods you can see what they look like and once those dry out you can eat them right now but once they dry out there'll be seeds in there there are two tomato plants right here both are indeterminates and you can see they get very tall they're about six feet tall now at the at the height and uh, that's really a little bit too tall, so I'm going to be topping these and thinning them and continue to thin them. You can see why I plant my tomatoes only two across. They're getting jungly in there, and you can see that that causes leaves down below to be shaded out, turn yellow, and drop. But uh, they're putting on fruit here and uh, making lots of, uh, lots of fruit for me. But uh, they're growing into my beans here as well. You can see there's some bean pods down here. These are big lima beans starting to come in. That's that's happy right there. Happiness. There's some more. These are huge lima beans. I'm excited to try them. I don't like lima beans, but I think if I grow them myself, I might change my tune. Here's a problem. I've got this plant and it's starting to you know, do the typical thing where some of the branches that are shaded down there and the older ones start to turn yellow, so I'll need to do a little trim and maintenance here. That guy over there, right next to it, that's going to have to come out, I think. 
that looks like maybe a magnesium deficiency, but I, I don't understand. It's the same soil as this one. And so that's that might be some kind of viral thing. I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research, but more than likely, that plant's going to have to come out. That's kind of sad, huh? Sometimes that happens. This is real gardening, you know? It's not always pretty. That just burn you up. Look at that. Something decided to make a home or a meal out of this one tomato that was on this one micro plant. So, my micros are about done too. You can see they're turning yellow. Some of them have already died off, but they're putting on a lot of fruit and the fruit's beginning to ripen. You can see there's some, some ripening fruit and I've been enjoying them, but you can also see that these look like they have some deficiencies too. And that's probably actually deficiency um, because plants will deplete a pot real quick. And if you don't fertilize regularly, they can die pretty quick. And these, most of these, uh, I haven't fertilized as much as I probably should have. And you can see that they're, they're suffering from it. So I'll trim them up and see if we can get some ripe fruit. I've been eating ripe, ripe fruit off of these guys over here. And uh, yeah, look at that micro plant with those big fruits on it. All those little fruits right there. My dog's been eating some of these, which uh, we caught her last night with... Uh, tomatoes in her mouth and uh, yeah she uh, won't be doing that again I hope there we go you can see that this plant looks like it's about done it too has the spots and uh, I'll have to research what this condition is whether it's a, a viral disease or whether it's something uh, blight or you know there's so much that can happen with tomatoes you got to baby these things along that I almost always will lose all my tomato plants to heat and late blight but uh, right now, yeah, these are ripening up. I think they're, the plant's trying to put on its last gasp and give me some tomatoes, and it'll be done. Here were my onions. I pulled my onions out and harvested them. They began to bolt, and so I thought, instead of letting them bolt, I'm gonna harvest the onions small. It's all right, man. Got a big basket of onions now. I'm gonna pickle them. But I'm gonna put in some blue corn here. It's a miniature variety. I'm gonna put a four by four block of corn in here. And this will be my first uh, my first effort for my summer garden. I look at my dragon tongue beans. I can see a second flush of beans coming on since I did my video about these. There's a lot of beans down in here, and they're a little bit plumper, a little bit bigger. And what I'm going to do is let these go and uh, dry on the vine. And so this crop is looking a little yellow. You can see that the leaves aren't as vibrant green. So uh, yeah, this is probably the last flush of fruit I'm going to get on here. These beans are looking uh, pretty nice. This is a good bean. I like it, but uh, I'm going to let them go to to uh, become shell beans. I'm going to let them dry out here on the vine, and then we'll we'll cut these down and put something else in here. What you looking for, Phoebe? Huh? What you looking for? You looking for the critter? I've shown you how my pumpkin plants wilt and weep during the uh, the heat of the day. They have plenty of water, but when the sun is directly on them, they they get all droopy and floppy like this. But you'll notice they come right back as soon as the shade hits them again. This is just a defense mechanism. They pump all the water down into the stems and in the roots. But uh, yeah, they're, they're gonna be fine. And they perk up every single day. Look at them though, they're starting to grow and vine out. We've got flowers forming. I don't see any uh, female flowers just yet. And I'm hopeful that we'll get some Kogibu pumpkins out of these. And there's another lizard that doesn't think I can see him. Actually, that's a female. So, uh, yeah, yeah, pumpkins, pumpkin pits, doing quite well. Wash my zucchini, putting on these huge fruits. My zucchini has uh, problems with powdery mildew. You can see that leaf right there, and these that are succumbing to powdery mildew. And I'm just letting them go because I'm only going to get a few more squashes out of these before the plants are just done. And uh, that's what happens when you get powdery mildew. It kills the leaves little by little. And you can see down there there's a fruit that didn't get pollinated. But uh, yeah, these, these were real happy. Um, these put on a lot of fruit for me. I can see one peeking out right there. I've been eating a lot of these. I've got a lot of them in storage. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this uh, zucchini this year, but these will come out soon and provide space for my summer gardens. I've got one, two, three, four, five. So this whole area right here will be space for summer garden crops. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna grow yet for summer, but uh, that'll be room. You saw my video on growing beans in pots. This is the Chinese long bean that is now growing and 
putting on some blossoms. I saw some blossoms on here the other day. There's a lot more. Uh, this will put me into some Chinese long beans, and I really love those. So that pot is supporting this plant just fine. There are three, three or four plants in there. Uh, right next to it are my sweet potatoes in pots. I'll probably need to trellis these when they get a little bit bigger. They're starting to vine out, but they took just fine. Uh, my green beans are starting to put on blossoms over here as well. These are pole beans, and yeah, I should have had a higher, I should have had a higher trellis, but I, I didn't have the material. So these guys, once they reach the top, they just kind of go where they want, and they'll flop down and cascade down the other side. I'm looking forward to some beans here. Probably need to hit these guys with some nitrogen, some fish emulsion. I did trellis my cucumbers here. These are Armenian cucumbers. And I trellised about half of them and the rest I'm going to let them sprawl because I need the ground cover to help suppress weeds. And cucumbers can sprawl, but uh, you can save, you can get straighter fruits if you grow them on a trellis. And so that's what's going on here. Down in between I've got some nasturtiums putting on tons and tons of blossoms. Two different varieties here, real pretty flowers. And uh, that's totally an edible plant if you need to eat it. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting my first uh, Armenian cucumbers off here. I'm going to see how they pickle. But uh, yeah, real pretty, lots of blossoms. And you can see once, if you saw my video, once you trellis them, the leaves all reorient themselves and they track the sun. So it's a real nice plant, real beautiful plant. Oh, I just discovered powdery mildew on my cucumbers. All right, we got a spray because I need these guys to produce. Uh, my potatoes. I have been harvesting some red potatoes. As you can see, there's nothing growing there. These potatoes are starting to lay down. I didn't get the harvest I had hoped for out of these. Um, you know, I did get an increase, but I didn't get as much as I wanted. So I'll show you when I actually go and, and harvest these uh, in earnest. We'll dump these buckets out and dig through them and see what we get. But I'm afraid it's not going to be as much as I wanted. And some of my, my potatoes have uh, scab, which is a condition that makes the potatoes kind of ugly. Uh, you can eat, still eat them, but yeah, they're kind of they're kind of gnarly looking. But uh, I do have about uh, well, I got like about a half gallon of potatoes in the house right now uh, from here and from one other plant that I harvested. And what I'm doing is I'm putting in sweet potatoes to follow them. Since sweet potatoes are morning glories and these are nightshades, there shouldn't be any conflict um, for you crop rotation folks. This is what pollinator attractors do. Look at that. You see that guy right there? Isn't that awesome? Uh, awesome. Eggplant's looking really good. I got lots of blossoms coming on. Tiny little fruits on some of those blossoms. So yeah, we should be good with some eggplant here. I do have some sweet potato slips waiting to be plugged in. And I probably should change that water. It looks kind of gnarly. Take a, take a whiff of that, Sam. See if it's any good. <laughs> yeah, so we need to change that water. But these will go in soon when my potatoes come out. Again, these squashes here are, are wilty because they're in direct sun, but you can see I'm getting some squash and I'll actually get something off of this one this year. These pumpkin pits, there's two of them. They didn't produce for me last year. I planted too late in the, in the year, but this year I'll at least get some squash out of them. Let's go look at the melons. Look at these guys over the sound of the AC unit. Uh, these are a cantaloupe style melon and I'm going to kind of train them to just grow wherever they want or, or let them grow wherever they want but this one I'm going to kind of train up here uh, yeah we got lots of blossoms it's a little dense down in there I might have to deal with that density but you can see this melon doesn't droop much because these uh, lilies here shade them much of the day and they're really beautiful Phoebe come out of there that's Phoebe's little passageway to go chase rats and stuff but yeah we're looking good here I hope to get some melons out of here if I get melons out of here, I'm going to plant this spot every year. This right here is my cursed fig tree. I've mentioned this tree for years on end because this fig tree for years on end has not produced any fruit. It is a ischia. I don't know if it's a white or a green ischia. Just came from Baker Creek as a tissue culture and was labeled ischia. But I got to pull that thing out. I need, I need things to produce. And if it's not producing for me, then I need to, you know, get that thing out of there. So, yeah, it's time is limited. Look in here. You think it's going to fruit because it puts on these little nodules here. But it should have figs on it already. And it doesn't. Ironically, I'm preaching on the cursed fig tree this year. Or this uh, Sunday from Matthew. So uh, maybe I'll make an object lesson out of this one, huh? 
All my potted fig trees, they start to look the same during the evenings and afternoons when they've had it with the sun. They start to wilt a little bit as well. Here's something unusual though. Look at this leaf structure on this fig and the same plant, if you follow this up, all of a sudden has uh, different kinds of leaves. I've seen this on a lot of different fig trees. But yeah, the figs are doing well. Uh, most of them are putting on lots of fruit and this fruit will, if I get it, uh, be very delicious. I love figs and I'm trying to find my five favorite fig trees. Uh, all these are putting fruit on now. If my dog doesn't eat them, my dog is a fig eating dog and she gets up in here and likes to swipe figs. There's a tiger stripe, LSU tiger stripe. I don't really like those too much, we'll see. You gotta give a fig about three or four years of tasting before you make a decision. Because the more mature a fig tree gets, the better its fruit tends to be. Cilantro going. Here are my russet potatoes. I hilled them up. They're looking really healthy. I mean, that's about the healthiest plant in my garden right there, I bet. No bugs, no slugs. Nice and sturdy. It's in a good growing space. Yeah, I hope we get some spuds out of there. This is what happens when your plants just give up. These are micros and micro dwarfs, and look at all those tomatoes that are on there. But they got some disease, and they're dead. They're dying. They're not going to make it. So I put them over here just so they would not be unsightly in my garden. And uh, kind of sad. I really wanted to try all these fruits. I don't know. I might pick them and see if they ripen. You know, a lot of tomatoes, if they've got some color to them, you can ripen them on the countertop. If they don't have color to them, usually that doesn't work well. But yeah, these, these are done. You know, the saddest thing you ever saw. Mustard greens, they love the heat. They took off, they're doing great. I'm gonna be eating some mustard greens, maybe today. No bugs in there whatsoever. Some of my refugees are doing well down here. That's a, that's a yellow brandy wine tomato and some flowers down here. They grow in the filtered sunlight under these grapevines. And the grapevines uh, do a good job of making a, a nice growing space. Speaking of these grapevines, I'm gonna have so much fruit this year. It's going to be crazy. Uh, there's fruit all over these things uh, coming in like that right there. And um, I couldn't be more happy. This is going to be a heavily laden uh, vine. This one is my biggest producer. It's a bronze type. And uh, look at all that fruit. It's crazy. Tons of. But these guys will uh, come to ripeness in August, September-ish. And we'll be into some more muscadines. I got 40 or 40 so pounds last year off of these vines. And the third one down there didn't produce because it was under a tree. Well, that tree's gone now, and it's got fruit on it, so we should be good. What a crop this is going to be this year. Check these guys out. This is called a toothache plant. And these flowers are said to have a numbing effect if you chew them up. So, these are the first three little flowers I've got. I'm going to try it. Toothache plant. Let's see. Okay. Tooth egg plant. A little uh, mostly pollen head flower. Hmm. Not sweet. Very vegetal. But there's some tingling there as I chew. Get a little sour. Maybe a little peppery. Hmm. As I hold it in my mouth, yeah getting a little numbing yeah that's very interesting I don't think I've ever had anything like that I can see how that would be a good medicinal <coughs> <coughs> yeah don't swallow it <laughs> don't swallow it hmm it's still building yeah I need a drink <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Man, okay folks, when you use a medicinal flower that is a numbing flower, don't accidentally swallow it. I couldn't talk for a while. My family was like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you talk? Yeah, that, that was weird. Uh, I can still feel it. It's been about 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes since I munched that flower head. And uh, I can still feel the numbness on the side of my mouth where I chewed it. I swallowed a little bit of it, and um, that numbed my vocal cords, actually. So, uh, or, or my throat, not necessarily my vocal cords themselves, but my throat. And I, my speech sounded like I was an old man or something. So that was some potent stuff. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess I should have probably researched a little bit of that. But uh, what an intriguing plant though, what a variety of uses. Uh, I don't think it has any culinary uses, but you could certainly make some medicinal use out of it. So uh, yeah, that was, that was weird. I had to eat some potato chips with the oil on those potato chips, and I'm not a big chip fan. But that oil really did help reduce the, uh, the, uh, the numbing effect. So I'm kind of back to normal now. Man, that was weird. Hey, thank you for joining us today. I hit 50,000 subscribers uh, during a live stream yesterday. That's, that was my milestone for the whole year, and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening. Bye-bye.